have a year 11 another homework video please turn to page 28 of your Romeo and Juliet book and it is best to use a colour code but either way we're going to be working on AO 1, 2 and 3 in the rather famous bit when Romeo and Juliet first speak to each other so let's crack on with that. Now the first thing I want to talk about before we look at the actual lines is it's really important to be clear that we understand that both Romeo and Juliet make lots of religious references which to the completely Christian audience at the time who would have gone to church every Sunday and would have done various religious things just as everyday life they would have completely understood what this meant so Shakespeare deliberately as a method used lots of religious imagery to maybe suggest that Romeo and Juliet's relationship is very sacred and holy Romeo refers to himself and his lips as being pilgrims or palmers um, it's the same thing really and it means a Christian who would travel to a shrine to worship and have sin removed now what a shrine is is a holy statue of a saint saints normally are people who actually died for their religion and they're they're made saints after they died now a pilgrim would go to the shrine and worship and by worshiping the shrine they would be absolved of sin whatever terrible things they'd done whatever sins uh, would be removed if they worshipped at a shrine um, i'll make various points about this but just quickly before we get into the annotations it's worth thinking about the fact uh, and sorry for spoilers, but Juliet does actually end up dead. And amongst the last lines of the play, a Lord Montague, Romeo's father, saying that he will build a statue, a shrine to Juliet. So there could be some subtle foreshadowing there. Uh, even though it's a beautiful scene, there's always reminders that this is all going to lead to a terrible death. The picture of a scene, year 11. Tybalt's just been fuming on stage, vowing revenge, and then to the front of the stage tucked away where no one can watch them Romeo has just gone up to Juliet she doesn't know who he is he's got his mask on still and he takes her by the hand he takes her off to the side and he's talking to her hand he says if I profane which means to ruin with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine the gentle fine is this my lips two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss and maybe he kisses her hand then now he's saying that Juliet's hand is like a shrine and his lips have come to worship and so they kiss her hand and Juliet replies good pilgrim you do wrong your hand too much which manly devotion shows in this for saints have hands but pilgrims hands do touch and palm to palm is holy palmers kiss have saints have not saints lips and holy palmers too I pilgrim lips for they must use in prayer oh then dear saint let lips do what hands do they pray grant thou lest faith turn to despair he's asking her oh can my lips not worship your lips Juliet says saints do not move though grant for prayer's sake then move not while my prayers effect I take sorry about the sound effects there thus from my lips by yours my sin is purged then have my lips the sin that they have took sin from thy lips oh trespass but sweetly urged give me my sin again there's another quick kiss there you kiss by the book i'm sorry about the sound effects here 11. very quick i'd like to make a note here for your ao2 very difficult to notice but let me give you a, a really good technique by Shakespeare the first 14 lines of this passage are actually in the sonnet form a sonnet is a form of love poem that Shakespeare often wrote so if you look at the 14 lines there are 10 syllables per line there is a fixed rhyme scheme and it ends with a couplet let me just show you what I mean so the rhyme scheme goes a b a b and then all the way down its alternating lines until the very end of the final two lines of the sonnet where actually Romeo and Juliet speak to each other in a rhyming couplet that rhymes sake with take. Now what must this mean? The fact that it's a hidden sonnet there in this scene. What do you think it means? Well sonnets love poems and this is the moment when the two greatest lovers of all time actually first meet and speak to each other and the time that they first kiss. So I think that's why a sonnet form is used. But a slightly more subtle reason could be that it shows how well Romeo and Juliet fit together. The fact that they actually start to rhyme with each other. They fit together like poetry. Uh, please pause this video if I'm ever going too quickly. I want to make another quick note on this whole passage. Just put it off to the side somewhere. 
for AO3 context, all audience members would have been very religious Christians, and so it would have meant a lot to them hearing this imagery of shrines and palmers and um, kissing being like a prayer. It would have been very powerful imagery for them. So just make a note of that. Pause and then come back when you're done. Right, let's get into AO1 now. You're going to need your AO1 colour for the rest of our annotations. We're done with the others. I want us now to just go through what we can learn about the theme of love and the characters of Romeo and Juliet. Well, the first thing to talk about is uh, Romeo, you know, walking up to this woman he's never met before and immediately telling her that he loves her and she's beautiful by likening her to a saint, a very holy person. Romeo says he wants to worship her by kissing her hand and he uses a clever metaphor. It's, it's a basic Shakespearean chat-up line, basically. But it tells us um, something about Romeo when he says that he wants to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. We've already learned that Romeo knows some good chat-up lines. He mentioned back at the start of the play that he tried all of his lines on Rosaline. So it's not like he's suddenly inspired to become a poet here. He's trying it on with her and he's trying lines that have worked for him before. But having said that, look at Juliet's reply. She doesn't just blush and say, oh, thank you. Um, Juliet shows that actually she's just as clever as him. She accepts Romeo's polite comparison to a saint. She says, oh, Pilgrim, please don't put yourself down. You know, you've been very polite. Mannerly devotion shows that she's impressed with his manners. However, she wants to slow him down. He's clearly gagging for a snog here, year 11. And she says, well, look, you know, saints have lips, but they have hands too. So maybe if we just put our palms together, then that will be like kissing. We can just hold hands for now. She's trying to slow him down, but she's also showing Romeo that she's not going to be bowled over by his religious stuff, but she can actually be just as witty and as intelligent as him. She's taking his religious metaphor and she's throwing it back at him. So Romeo doesn't give up, though. He doesn't just slink off. He carries on wanting to kiss her. He says, have saints lips and holy palmers too? He said, well, we both have lips. And she says, well, lips need to be used for prayer. Romeo says, OK, well, if we press our lips together, then that will be praying. Now, we'd better pray now, otherwise my faith, you know, uh, my religion will turn to despair. He, he's, he's really pushing on now, but he's saying, come on, if we've both got lips, surely they should be used to be pressed together in a prayer. So the first thing to notice is that the beginning of the sonnet, Romeo had four lines that rhymed. And Juliet had her own four lines that rhymed, but now they're starting to mingle between each other. Maybe it shows that they're becoming closer and more in love. In fact, they actually begin to rhyme with each other. Um, Romeo is persisting with religious metaphor, but Juliet carries on, not batting him away, but seeing how much he's going to work for it. Juliet's not saying, no, I'm not going to kiss you. She's making him really try. She's making him, um, I'll tell you what she's doing, she's playing hard to get here. She doesn't want Romeo to think that she's easy. She's just met the guy. She clearly has looked into his eyes and she really likes him. But she doesn't want him to think that he can just kiss her and move on. She's going to make him work for it. And I think we learned something about Romeo and Jet, uh, uh, Juliet here when Romeo manages to persuade her. He says, let lips do what hands do. We've already pressed hands and this feels good. Let's move, let's move on to the next step. And Juliet eventually then, um, she gives him permission because he says, grant thou, they pray grant thou. He's saying, please grant me permission to kiss you. He won't do it until she's actually said. She, and she's saying, well, if I'm a saint, if I'm a statue, then I can't move. You're going to have to make the move, mate. OK, but she does say, although I grant for prayer's sake. So she's saying, OK, I will let you kiss me. And then he says, OK, we'll move not then. And let's pray together. Let's uh let my prayer take effect and they kiss so she made him work for it but eventually he said may i have permission to kiss you otherwise it will all go away and she says okay well you make the move then and that's where the sonnet ends but there's still a few more rhyming lines here so they've kissed and romeo then says that by kissing his sin is purged he's sticking with this idea that he he went to worship her and now his sin has been removed Juliet then teases him. She says, oh, well, does that mean that I've got the sin? You've just passed it on to me. And Romeo says, oh, in that case, I'll have it back then. And he uses that as an excuse to kiss her again. Um, this might seem like he's been very pushy and harassing her, but Juliet is very much letting him know what he can do. OK, um, he is a, he, he's 
waiting for her to give him the signal and she's decided when she's happy to do it. So there really is uh, an equal respect here. They've only just met each other. I've had a lot of students say, well, how can they love each other? We have to believe that this was destined, it was meant to be, but they were always going to find each other in the midst of this war, this gang war and this feud, and that the moment they saw each other, they would know it was destiny. Now, there's an interesting final bit here. Juliet says, finishing the rhymes there, rhyming book with took, she says, well, you kiss by the book. Now, this could mean one of two things, and it could mean both. By kissing by the book could show that Romeo is a well-trained, well-educated kisser, that he's he's a student of kissing, and that he's very good. So maybe she's saying, oh, I liked that, by the way, that was a really good kiss. Um, it's worth remembering, Juliet is very unlikely to have kissed anyone before, so her innocence is always important to remember. But my preferred interpretation is that she's actually mildly teasing him again. She says, you kiss by the book, which means that he basically... He's just managed to kiss her, but all of his moves and his lines are very cliche. They're all predictable. She's saying, mate, you know, even though I let you kiss me, you know, just to let you know, I knew what you were doing there. I didn't fall for any tricks. She's letting him know that she's no pushover, and I prefer that. Uh, she likes him, don't get me wrong. She's not telling him to go away, but she's letting him know that she didn't get tricked there. The point is that until two scenes later, which we're going to study next week, until two scenes later, um, Juliet knows how she feels about him, but she doesn't know if this is just another smooth talking guy yet. Okay, Romeo is absolutely certain how he feels about Juliet, but Juliet has loads of guys after her at this banquet, Paris and probably lots of other men. And so she's thinking, well, this man makes me feel different, but I don't want to just let him know how I feel. I need to be cool with him. So that's Romeo and Juliet's first meeting. And hopefully you can see how they really do fit well together. It's tragic at the end that they die because these two people from very different households who hate, um, whose families hate each other, they really are a good match for each other. They can match each other's wit. Romeo's full of passion and emotion, but Juliet's a little bit more sensible and grounded, okay? She slows him down and says, okay, well, you know, I might let you kiss me, but I'm not just going to let you, you know, throw all this passion at me and then just let you get away with it. And we see that throughout their relationship, that Romeo is the impulsive, passionate, free man. And Juliet, um, given her own upbringing, is a little bit more grounded and um, a little bit more logical. I'd like you to pick a task now, please. You can pause the video, copy down the question that you're going to do, and just do me a quick paragraph for homework. Um, I would like a quotation, and hopefully the notes you've just made will help you with this. How does Shakespeare use religious language to show Romeo and Juliet's true love? You could pick any of those quotes about shrines or sin or prayer. And you could just try to explain how Romeo and Juliet really do love each other because they're using such powerful imagery about how they fit like a pilgrim and a shrine. You could actually, this is probably more difficult. I'm not sure which one you'll find more difficult, but I think B is a bit trickier. You could explain how Shakespeare wrote their first 14 lines in a sonnet form to show that they fit well together. And then eventually they start rhyming with each other and that shows that this is true love, not like the other love that we've seen in the play. I think I'd better leave it there. I've been really determined to keep this to be a quick video, everyone. I'm just over 14 minutes, so I think for Mr. O'Neill, that's actually pretty good. Okay, I look forward to seeing this work. Well done. Bye-bye.